and the Italian women in wine, please welcome Miss Aurora Indrici. Thank you so much, Mr. Capriati. Uh, welcome, dear guests, to the gala dinner of uh, Wines of Veneto. I'm very glad to be here and to represent the wines uh, of uh, one of the most interesting uh, wine-growing regions in Italy. Um, well, my Italian uh, is better than my English, so I apologize if you don't understand what I'm saying. Um, but, well, actually, uh, what we are doing now is to present in the United States. We started a month ago with uh, this road show, Wines of Veneto, um, and we visited Los Angeles and Miami, presenting the wines of five provinces of the region, um, which are working together to the, for the promotion of uh, local varieties, which are so interesting, uh, uh, speaking about uh, the local wine of Italy, and especially in Veneto, there are a lot of uh, varieties which are very interesting. And even today, even during this uh, dinner, you will taste some wine that I'm sure uh, you taste for the first time. Everybody knows Prosecco, everybody knows Amarone, but Veneto produces so uh, interesting white and red and sparkling and sweet wines that we would like to introduce in the United States because uh, their quality is very, very high. Let me tell you something about the region. Re uh, Veneto is in the northeast of Italy and it's quite big uh, as a region has uh, five million inhabitants and most of them are involved in the wine sector as wine grower or as I am a wine promoter. We, we have uh, uh, seven provinces. Two of them do not produce any wine, but Verona, Padova, Trieste, Venezia, and Vicenza are uh, big wine producing provinces. Well, um, Veneto is also popular, not only for wine and food, but for other, uh, for other sector, for instance, for fashion, for furniture. Actually, Veneto is the most export-oriented region in Italy, but not only in Italy, in Europe. So we, we work hard <laughs> promoting the quality of the territory. Um, let me tell you something, just a couple of words. On each wine you are going to taste today. You started before with the Prosecco Superiore Conegliano Valdobbiadene DOCG. Please pay attention because Prosecco is one of the most popular sparking wine uh, in the world. And unfortunately, over the past 10 years, other regions in Italy, but also other countries in the world, uh, started producing Prosecco or something like Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> naming a uh, uh, simple sparkling Prosecco. And that destroyed the quality of the, uh, the real quality of Prosecco, which is uh, originally made only in the province of Treviso, and exactly in two, two villages, which are Conegliano and Valdoviadene. The grape of Prosecco is Clara, not Prosecco, but Clara, that's interesting. Um, and since the vintage 2010, we, um, well, the Prosecco of Conegliano Valdopiadene was awarded with the DOCG designation. What does it mean? DOCG in Italiano si dice denominazione di origine controllata e garantita. Actually, a DOCG wine means the highest quality of wine produced in Italy. Uh, today, there are in Italy almost 40 DOCG wine, and 11 of them are produced in the Veneto region. Well, if you buy a Prosecco, please not, uh, pay attention, because it has to be a DOCG Conegliano Valdobbiadene or a DOC Prosecco di Treviso, which means original Prosecco. Um, in terms of quality, you feel the difference in the mouth, uh, the bubbles, uh, the flavor. Prosecco uh, has to be very flavored and not so easy as easy drinking, but 
with no character, as many Prosecco of that quality are unfortunately avail available on the market today. Well, the wine, the white wine that you already have in your glass is, um, I, I, I think, not so popular. The name of the wine is Lison Classico DOC. What is Lison? First of all, this wine is produced in the province of Venezia. Actually, the wonderful Venice has a, a, a large surface uh, with vineyards. And most of them, that's very interesting, are organic farming. Well, actually, the vineyards surrounding Venezia are some of the most interesting um, uh, yeah, vineyards where organic or biodynamic wines are produced. And Lison is the name of this uh, uh, mineral and fresh floral white wine, which is made with a local grape. Uh, its name is Tokai Italico or Tokai Friulano. But actually, maybe you know that since uh, um, two vintages ago, we cannot say Tokai anymore in Italy because the Hungarian producers of this sweet wine, Tokai, they won their battle. <laughs> and they only, the Hungarian can use this name. But actually, the Tokai from Hungary is completely different from the Tokai from Friuli or the Lison from Ven Venice. The, the grape is different. It's very, very, another grape. It's another grape. And I think this wine is fantastic because it's a well-balanced, round, and so fruity and floral. The third wine we are going to taste this evening has a strange name. It's a Bagnoli Friulano D.O.C. Um, Bagnoli is the name of the area where this wine is made. It is, in fact, a red wine, and the name of uh, the grape is fri Friularo. Um, maybe some of you know the Raboso grape, which comes from Treviso area. In the province of Padua, where Friulan, Friularo is made, um, the name of the grape is Friularo. Friularo is a red grape of ancient origin. It comes from Caucaso, and it was imported during the Serenissima Republic uh, uh, in the Middle Age from uh, Caucaso. Um, its main characteristic is the acidity level, which is quite high. So in order to uh, produce such a full-bodied and powerful wine, you will, you will taste how full-bodied and perfumed this wine is. The grapes are dried for some months, before, in, before being pressed and fermented in oak barrels, barriques. Well, and then we continue with the king of Ventus wine, the most popular uh, high quality red wine, I would say also from Italy, not only from Veneto, which is Amarone. Amarone is produced in the province of Verona, the city of Romeo and Juliet, and of the famous Arena. Arena. And uh, it, um, Amarone is made with mainly with a red grape, which is na uh, whose name is uh, Corvina, and with a smaller amount of other local varieties, which are Corvinone and Rondinella. Um, Amarone is the, I would say, uh, the, the most important wine um, referring to a uh, powerful wine made with drying the grapes. 100% of the grapes of Amarone are dried for a long time after being harvested, uh, almost four months in the cellar. They are um, harvested quite earlier um, uh, and uh, with high acidity in the berries and then dried in the cellar. After this drying process, they undergo a slow fermentation in barrels they can last even a month because of the high sugar level that each berry has after being dried. You know, the drying process is very important because uh, by drying the grapes, you lose a lot of water and you increase the sugar level and that means uh, higher alcohol potential <coughs> by fermenting the must, the grape must. 
And that is very important because by drying the grapes, you get a longer potential uh, in terms of uh, lasting, uh, lasting potential of wine. In fact, to drink properly in Amarone, you have to wait almost 10 years after vintage to reach the uh, perfect point to appreciate the quality of an Amarone. And an Amarone, a good Amarone, has no fear of aging in the bottle. Actually, you can uh, appreciate Amarone from the 60s and from the 70s. They don't, uh, they don't, they don't get old. They are fantastically lasting, uh, lasting with that wines with lasting potential. Well, and at the end, which is the province who I never mentioned before, is the province of Vicenza. The last wine, the dessert wine, the sweet wine we will have this evening is a ricciotto di gambellara. The grape of a ricciotto di gambellara is the same grape of Soave which is a garganega. Um, Rechotto di Gambellara is made on uh, volcanic, beautiful volcanic hills surrounding the town of Vicenza. Rechotto means ears, because usually in the past, the, yeah, the older wine grower used to just harvest the ears of each bunch and to dry the ears in the cellar before pressing, pressing them and fermenting them. So ears means rece, rece. Well, uh, Ricciotto di Gambellara is a fantastic dessert wine. Sometimes it, um, the grapes, uh, during the drying process, uh, get also botrytis. That's why a Ricciotto di Gambellara is so complex and the flavor of a Ricciotto is fantastic. It goes from uh, tropical fruits to, uh, I would say, to spices sometimes. The, it deals with the barrique where the ricciotto is fermented. And also, and also, that's very interesting, uh, floral hints, especially orange blossom. <coughs> so I hope you will enjoy this tasting and this dinner, of course. And I'm, I'm sitting there in the center of this room. If you have questions, I'm, uh, I'll be glad to answer your question. So thank you so much.